to pray this morning that scriptural passage was the scripture that we discussed in details yesterday with my family and there is a lot to learn there is a lot to pray the first prayer i want you to it is self-explanatory it is like a story i want you to pray one prayer say father in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i will not go into error i will not go into error open your mouth and pray. in the name of jesus lord i ask that you will help me not to go into error lord help me not to go into error in jesus mighty name we pray amen i want you to pray very well you see ben adad was boasting arrogantly oppressing and uh, inflicting pain on king here there are some people who are using their position to oppress you you are going to pray there are some people by the virtue of the position they are occupying they are using that privilege to look down on you to sort of tear you down but you serve a living god the lord will arise for you today amen and he will fight for you amen lift up your voice and say, father i depend on you I depend on you Lord, and fight for me. Fight for me. Open your mouth and fight for God. 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 And fight for me in Jesus mighty name we pray amen the bible says thou shall arise Psalm 102 verse 13 thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion thank you father the Lord asked me to tell someone here he said I'm taking away that body amen I just asked God. He said, That body is lifted. That body is lifted. I just heard him now. That body is lifted. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want you to cry to God. This man submitted his wife, his children. The silver, the gold. Can you imagine somebody saying, hey, 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 tomorrow everything you own belongs to me. And do you know that the man concord? He said, yeah, you can have it. I want you to cry to God. There are some people who are, who are oppressing you and taking advantage of you. I say you don't have God. God will fight for you. Amen. I say my God will fight for Amen. you. Amen. Lift up your voice, my Father, my Father, Father, my Father. In the name of Jesus, I fight my battle. Arise! Fight my battle. Arise! I fight my battle. Fight my battle. Oh, rule your mouth and cry to God. Fight your battle. Arise in your power. Arise in your mercy. And fight for me. Arise, O God. And fight my battle. Arise, O God. And fight my battle. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Mr. Clement, can you help me increase this person? I want you to pray. I don't mean to pray, but we are going to pray. Tell your neighbor, I will pray. God is a God that answers prayer. Thou shall arise and have mercy on Zion. You will cry to God, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. I don't want you to joke with that prayer. Now, 
when you look at the history of Ahab, Ahab is a wicked king. But by the mercy of God, God came down and said, Ahab, don't worry, I will fight for you. He did not qualify. He, he didn't want it at all. But the mercy of God showed up. Why? Because the enemy has passed their boundary. He said, who is that God that will deliver you? He said, if, if not my God, I will cut off you. I will. He was, ah, where God is. Somebody has passed their boundary over your life. And God will show up. I said, on your behalf, my God will show up. Amen. Lift up the voice of my father, my father. Father, my father. Have mercy on me. Me. And fight my battle. My open your mouth and fire prayer. Lord, have mercy upon my life. Have mercy upon us. Arise and show us your mercy. Arise and show us your mercy concerning our career. Show us your mercy concerning our family. Show us your mercy. Arise, O God. Have mercy, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Open your eyes. The Bible says when they when they prepared, when Ben Ada prepared, it was having thousands upon thousands of chariots and strong men, right? And the Bible, I love that uh, living version. It said, the Israelites, I mean, they were like little goat compare. I don't even know why I'm asking you for mercy. Romans 9, 16 says, it is not of it that run it. Neither is your V that will it. But it is of God that sh there is twenty people listening to me. My God will show you mercy. You may not qualify. You may not have all with her. But the mercy of God will show up for you. I said the mercy of God will show up for you. The mercy of God will show up for you. In your career, it will show up. In your job, it will show up. In your marriage, it will show up. In your business, it will show up. The mess of God will show up. The mess of God will show up. The mess of God will show up. It is the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. For they are new every day. Great is thy faithfulness. I want you to pray this last prayer. Say, Thou shalt have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her. Yea. This set time I seek on. Your set time for favor has come. There is someone here as you are walking out of this place. You are walking into your favor. It remains just two days for this month to be over. Many have shared your their testimony. You listening to me right now. You looking at me right now. In the next 24 hours, I carry you into favor. 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 Say, Father, close me with favor. Open your mouth and fire prayer. Lord, close me with your favor. Father, close me with your favor. In Katunde Romo Sekatale Kapaye Gede, in Kapala Koskoto Legada. Oh Lord, close me with your favor. In the name of Jesus, close me with your favor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If not for the time, for the next one hour, we'll be praying for favor. You need it, I need it. I wish you can pray very well. You see, when the favor of God comes upon you, it terminates labor in your life. When favor comes, what you struggle to achieve suddenly come on your lap. Because the favor of God is at work. There is someone listening to me. An end comes to struggle in your life. If you receive it, say a louder amen. There is, there is someone looking at me. I saw that person now, but I won't mention it. As you go this week, 
favor will locate you. Where you are, favor will locate you. Where you are, man will help you. Where you are, they will come. They will come looking for you. Can I pray for someone here? Every cloud of darkness that has covered you in the name that is above hey, 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 hey. the heaven is about to be open for someone here. In the name that is above every other name, every cloud of darkness that has covered your destiny, if your amen can be louder, catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Catch fire! Thank you, Father. There is someone listening to me. This week, somebody will ask you, where have you been? Yes, because suddenly, from left and center, they will be looking for you. Not for evil, but to favor you. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Father. Lift up your hands and say, Father, send your word to me this morning. Bless my soul through your word. Open your mouth and pray. La kuta la brabaga yagada le boboko shakata. Lord, send your word to me this morning. Oh, the Spirit of the Living God, send your word to me this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, we bow down and worship. Yeah. receptive to receive your word and let there be transformation in Jesus name we have prayed amen. and the people will say louder amen. amen put your hands together for Jesus you can please have your seat brethren you are welcome in the name of Jesus those who are watching us online on Facebook on YouTube you are all welcome to the last Sunday in the month of June Tonight, this morning is our anointing service and I want you to get ready every one of us will be anointed and is going to move us to the next level of our life this morning I will be doing a brief teaching on the anointing for commitment it's still in line with um, what we have been looking at this month it is time to seek the Lord but we are looking at it from another perspective looking at someone as a classical example. Go with me to Second King, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, then we will jump to 10 to 15. Second King, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3. I read, When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven, in a wide wind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to better. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord liveth, and as your soul liveth, I will not leave you. So they went down.
to Bethel. And the company of the prophet at Bethel came out to Elisha and said, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? He said, Yes, I know. Elisha replied, So be quiet. This morning, all your adversary, the Lord will silence them. So let's move to verse 9 to 15. And when they had crossed, you are crossing over from poverty to prosperity. God bless those who are saying amen. You are crossing over from shame to fame. You are crossing over from lowest level to the highest level. And then when they had crossed over, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what can I do for you before I'm taken away from you? And he said, let me inherit the double portion of your anointing. Elijah replied, Oh, you have asked a difficult things, Elisha said. Yet if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. And as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a shadow of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up into heaven in a wide wind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariot and the horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. In the name that is above every other name, I pray for you today. When your miracle comes, you will see it. I'm so happy that everybody is connected this morning. God bless you. When your miracle comes, you will miss it. And Elijah saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it into two. That garment of shame is consumed now. Elisha then picked up Elijah's clothes that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of Jordan. He took the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord God of Elijah? He asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left, and it crossed over. You are crossing over. The complaints of the prophet from Jericho, who we are watching, said, The spirit of Elijah is resting on Elisha. And they went to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. Your enemy will bow to you. Your mockers will bow to you. Ah, can I prophesy to 50 people here in the name that is above every other name? Those who think you will not reach your goal, they are coming to bow to you. In the name of Jesus. I love this story. Anytime I read this story, I'm fired up again. I'm fired up in my spirit because it is a classical example of a great man going somewhere great and with so much distraction, with so much discouragement, with so much oppression. But this man remained focused. He remained resilient. And at the end, those who were mocking him, they came to bow. I can tell you this, brethren, don't lose your dream. Don't lose your vision. Stay focused because very soon you will be celebrated. I said very soon you will be celebrated. <laughs> I'm talking to you. You will be celebrated. Those who think nothing can anything good come out of this one that is just following like a blind person. I'm telling you very soon. You too, you will not even know. Because Ephesians 3.20 said to me, he said unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you even think or imagine you don't you i don't know what you are thinking of but i have a god who will surprise you anointing for commitment anointing for commitment we've been talking about seeking the lord and we saw this example of a man elisha who was crazy for god just seeking the lord through the man of god called elijah the moment the connection eat each other in the book of first king chapter 1 verse 19 elijah was just going because god has already instructed him you will you will found a man called elisha his name looks so similar to yours all you need to do is to throw up your mantle upon him don't say anything to him as soon as the mantle fell upon elisha he ran after elijah and he said ah, ah, master don't worry i understand what you are saying but just give me a minute let me package myself let me clear the ground and i will follow you and he meant what he said and from that day the bible 
Bible says he ministered before Elijah. What is commitment? I have nine definition, but I will give you just few. What is commitment? It's the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. What is commitment? I think commitment is the trust of putting your time, your energy, and a degree of risk into something or someone. Commitment. What is commitment? Number three. Commitment is the willingness. Let somebody say willingness. Willingness to give your time and your energy to a job or activity or something that you believe in. Your willingness to give your time, your energy to a job, to what activity or something that you strongly believe. What is commitment? Commitment is a promise to give yourself your time and your support to a particular cause that you are convinced of. What is commitment? Commitment is a promise of a firm decision to do something a firm decision to do something or the fact of promising or a fact of promising to do something. Number five. Commitment is taking action to make things happen or to get work done at all costs. We saw this in the life of Elisha. This act of commitment stood out in his life. You know what? The moment he got in touch with Elijah, he held on unto him forever. And guess what? When it was time for the baton to be pass passed over, because there is someone listening to me now, God is about to pass the baton to you. <laughs> Don't be afraid now. He's going to take you to a higher ground. <laughs> hey, hallelujah! He stood with Elijah till the very end. And so when the time was about for power to change hand, there were prophets and there were prophets. The Bible says that Elijah communicated to Elisha. Hey, Elisha, God has sent me to Bethel from Gilgal. But you stay here. Ah, say, my master, what am I doing I don't have any other thing again. I've borne all the bridges behind me. You go, I go. Wherever you go, I go. I don't then treat me to leave you. I'm going with you. He said, all right, no problem. And as they were going, there were songs of the prophet. They were also prophets, but they were songs of the prophet too. There were 50, there were one. Like we, we studied, I mean, during that uh, uh, Bible reading, there were, okay, it was this morning, there were 50 prophet that came to Ahab and they told Ahab, Ahab, go to that battle, you will win. But there was one man, a prophet called Prophet uh, Micah. That one, <laughs> King Ahab was very angry with this man. He said, this man, he will never, prof he will never prophesy. It does no evil. He said, okay, let's hear from him. And he said, well, now that you have come, 50 people have said I should go, I will prosper. So you better say the same thing. <laughs> he said, well, it is what God said to me that I will say. I said, okay, well, let's hear you. And he said, well, I see Israel scattered without a sheep. He said, without a shepherd, sorry. And he have said to um, Eli, uh, Prophet uh, uh, Jehoshaphat, and he said, you see, I told you, I told you. He, he doesn't see good things always if I told you. He said, well, I'm speaking the mind of God, not the mind of men. And one of the prophets was angry. He said, how dare you? Bah! And he slapped him. He said, how dare you? Where, 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 how did God leave me and, uh, and communicate to you? He said, well, and I said to my wife, I said, sometimes many does not know God has left them. God will not leave you. But eventually, the point I'm trying to say is that there are prophets and there are prophets. So the 50 prophets were telling Elisha, Elisha, don't you know your master will be taken away from you? Why are you still following him like a blind man? We are telling you this. God has revealed it to us. Your master will be taken. He said, ah, it's not a news. I know. Be quiet. 
Let's learn from this man. Number one, what are the signs of commitment? Number one, signs of commitment. Number one sign is that um, you always see such individuals, they are always with their leaders to execute every assignment given to their leaders and given to them. John chapter 10 verse 27. Can somebody help me? John 10 verse 27. He said, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them and they follow me. They are always with their leaders. And we saw that in the life of Jesus. Jesus always take Peter, John, and James to Mount Transfiguration. Jesus will take Peter, James, and John to the Garden of Gethsemane. We see the disciples always with Jesus, wherever Jesus, always together, carrying the assignment together. And that was exactly what Elisha model. Elisha said, where you go, I go with you. Don't entreat me not to follow you. As the Lord liveth and his soul liveth, I'm going with you. Moses and Joshua, they are always together. Mo Joshua and Moses. And there is someone here too. God is telling you, I'm going to make you great in destiny. Ah, but all you need is just commitment to a particular cause. Number two. Number two. They see what their leader sees. And they hear what their leader hears. They are sold to the vision of their master. And they are baptized with that vision. You see, when Elijah was about to be taken away from, from Elijah, he said something. Who can remind me? He said something. He said, if you see me when I'm taken away from you, you shall have the power. So, do you know what? Elijah was trying to, to divert, to distract. Let me use that word. To distract Elijah. So they engaged in discussion. They were discussing. They were discussing. Because it's going to happen suddenly. As there was, this guy was so focused. He didn't allow that distraction to carry them away. As soon as the host of fire and the host of heaven came and took Elijah suddenly. He said, I saw you, my father, my father, the shadow of Israel and the host thereof. He said, okay, you can have it now. And the power came down. There is someone you are having the power. The anointing to do great exploit is coming upon you. But one of the signs is that you must see what your leader see. You must see into the spirit of your leader. The Bible says that Moses' spirit was taken and was given to the, ten, the 70 elders so that they can operate on the same frequencies. Number three. What are the signs of commitment? They are lovers of God. They are lovers of God. They love God with passion. Number four, the signs of commitment. These people, they have resolved within themselves never to leave their duty post or depart from following their leaders. No matter the circumstances. And when I was studying, I saw the story of Ruth and Naomi. Let somebody read for us. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 and 18. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 to 18. And Ruth, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you, or to return from following after thee. Wherever you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Thy people will be my people, and your God my God. Yes, uh huh. Yes, to me, if death. And Naomi saw the Ruth that he had made up her mind to go with her, so Naomi stopped arguing with him. Can you see? I was wondering what came upon Ruth. Ruth has just lost her husband. This woman is already old. According to the scripture, anyone that has lost her husband, by the grace of God, she had the opportunity to do what? To remarry. Am I right? But there is something she saw that we don't even know in the life of Naomi. He said, ah, madam, you know, he has a choice. There was Ruth uh, and uh, Oprah. Two of them were actually 
with Naomi. I offered Christ Naomi and said, well, I think I need to go back to my God and continue my life. But Ruth said, hey, 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 there is something I may not explain. I may not be able to see, but there is something. Wherever you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. I am sold out to you. And you, we can see the end. What happens to Ruth at the end of the day? The Bible says that she eventually became the great grandmother of Jesus Christ. I see someone here. Something great is coming out of you. Say louder, amen, if you believe this. Mighty things are coming out of you. You may not know it now, but I can guarantee you when you pitch your tent with God and get yourself committed, greater things that we humble men, they are coming out of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the reason of root commitment, it was even Naomi that was planning for her. He said, Let me prepare a place for you, my daughter. And do you know the surprising thing was this? In all that little town, everybody has recognized Ruth that this is a genius, a well-behaved woman. In the name that is above every other name, you will stand out. I love your amen. Because you receive it, you will have it. In the name of Jesus. John chapter 6 verse 67 to 69. John chapter 6 verse 67 to 69. Something happened between Jesus and the disciples. You know, Jesus was preaching to the crowd. He was preaching with all figure. He was pouring out his heart. And do you know what? Some people got offended. And the Bible says, and from that day, all of them, they forsook Jesus. But look at what happened in 67. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Samuel Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? For thou hast the word of eternal life. And we believe and we are sure that thou art Christ, the son of the living God. What a great commitment. He said, well, we have no place to go anymore. <laughs> you only one that has the true life. Our life, me, I have sold, I have left my boat I have left the sheep. <laughs> I don't have any other life than you. And look at what turned out to be the great disciples. They turned out to be great and mighty men. I see great and mighty men here today. In the name of Jesus Christ, all we need is commitment. Second King chapter 2 verse 1. Second King chapter 2 verse 1. Elisha said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to better. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord liveth and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to better. My question is, what did Elijah promise Elisha? What did Jesus promise the disciple? What has Naomi promised Ruth that made them to have such kind of undivided, unallowed commitment. I think they've seen the future. They may not be able to understand. But all these three people that I showed you, they ended up becoming great. There is five people here. If your amen can be louder, you are coming out great. Those who followed David... David was running from pillar to post. You get what I'm saying now. The Bible says 600 people followed him. How, 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 did, how did they describe them? Non-entity. Vagabond. But they kept on following. They kept on following. They, they were following someone who was, <laughs> who was running from cave to cave. Who cannot even take care of himself. Is anybody listening to me here this morning? Who doesn't even have a bearing? Who is a who, the king is looking for him? And they, <laughs> in fact, a king said, uh, There was one man who said, You, this useless man, uh, uh, we know you are always running away from your master. Who, who said that statement? <laughs> Naba. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end, the same Fadabon, the same people who thought nothing can come became their king. And all those who followed David at that time, the Bible recorded that they became mighty men. And that's why I'm glad to announce to someone here, you are ending up mighty women. You are ending up a mighty man. In the name of Jesus Christ.
Let somebody shout commitment. commitment. Number five. What is the sign of commitment? So they have a strong choice to die at their duty post. They have made a strong choice that nothing. You see, the, 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 the 50 prophets, they were telling Elijah, don't you know your master will be taken away from you? He said, I know. Keep quiet. You can't convince me. I've already sold myself out. Forget that one. And they cannot be influenced against their will. They, are, they have a strong choice. Look at what the Bible says concerning Paul. Paul, the book of Acts chapter 21 verse 13. Acts 21 verse 13. Is anybody there? Thank you, Jesus. Acts 21 13. Look at what Paul said. And then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am not only ready, not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name They have a strong choice to die at their duty post. They were not afraid. Commitment. But did, did they actually die? No. Mm. He became one of the greatest apostles in the Bible. Two third of the Old New Testament were written by Paul. Yes, he suffered so greatly. But the Bible says that uh, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, I labor more than you all. Among the apostles, we can agree that he was one of the greatest. Look at his commitment. Look at the word of his mouth. He was ready to die at the duty post. That was what Elijah also did. He said, Elijah, Elijah, sir, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to offend you, but don't entreat me to leave you. As the Lord liveth and the soul liveth, me, I'm going with you. But guess what? Do you know that Elijah did not even tell him that he was going? Somebody would have said, well, uh -uh, for all this while I've been working with you, you cannot even tell me your mind. <laughs> And I'm following you like a blind man. You, you have this in your mind that, that you'll be going. You don't even tell me. That's not fair. Oh. No. It's not everything that you will know. It's, it can be a setup. Amen. It can be what? A setup. But I'm trusting God for someone here. As you get that strong desire to remain with Jesus, to remain with God, with all your heart, you will end up becoming great. Number six, what are the signs of a genuine commitment? They always shun distractions and remain focused. Always shun distractions. Distractions like the cares of the world, the lukewarmness, the success of others, the negative influence from friends and loved ones, internal and external pressure from friends and unbelievers. They always shun it. That was what Elisha did. The complaint of the prophet at Bethel came out to Elisha. They came out to him and asked him, do you not know that your master will be taken away from you today? He said, yes, I know. Keep quiet. Shun distractions. What are you still doing there? Yes, I know. They have that strong dis focus to, to, to shun every form of distraction. Number seven. What are the signs? Number seven. They are consistent in their confession. They are consistent in their confession. And they believe about the assignment. They believe the assignment. They are not easily convinced otherwise. They are very strong, very consistent in their confession. Very consistent. Will your master be taken away from you today? I know. Keep quiet. Yes. Don't you know your master will be taken away from you today? Yes, I know. Be quiet. Don't you know your master will be taken away from you today? Yes, I know. Be quiet. Several from, from, from Gilgal to Bethel, from Bethel to Jericho, from Jericho to Jordan. You will get there. Every distraction on your way, I see God removing them now. Do you know why? The enemy, for one reason or the other, may have a glimpse of where you are going to be in destiny. As a result of that, he will begin to set different things in order to distract you. Say to yourself, I refuse distraction. Ephesians 4, 14. Ephesians 4, verse 14. The Bible says, then we will no longer be infant, tossed back and forth 
by the waves and the blows here and there by every winds of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Elisha, in spite of the pressures and the mockery from the sons of the prophet, they remain consistent with their confession and they remain focused. Number eight. What are the signs? Oh, number nine, completion. Number nine. Are you with me? Are you with me? Who can mention the number one? Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number seven. Six. Number seven. Number eight. God bless. Let's clap for Jesus. I told you we are doing a teaching today. <laughs> and number eight. They are always ready to defend their faith. They are always ready to defend their faith and what they believe against every opposition. Always ready to defend their faith and belief system against all opposition. Brethren, I want you to know when you are committed to God, you'll be consistently defending your faith because there will be pressure, brethren. Yeah, there will be pressure. I can't tell you that. I can't tell you that. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. It said something. It said, but in your heart, reference Christ as Lord. Always prepare to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for your hope that you have. But do, but do this with gentleness and respect. Always be ready to give an answer because they will ask you. Always be ready to give an answer because they want to convince you. But they are ready to defend their faith. They are ready to believe in what they believe. First uh, Corinthians 9 verse 27 He said I discipline myself I discipline my body like an athlete Training it to do what it should Otherwise I fear That after I have preached to others I myself will not be disqualified In the name of Jesus You will not be disqualified Amen. Let me quickly round up What can hinder us from committing ourselves To God and to the assignment And to the leadership Number one is sin the Bible says the hands of the Lord is not shutting that he cannot deliver. Neither is he here that he cannot say. But our sin has separated us from him. The moment Adam and Eve sinned against God, they couldn't withstand God anymore. The reason why many are not committed is because they still have one secret sin or the other. So they are not confident enough. So get rid of sin. Number two is pride. The reason why many are not committed is pride. Satan is the architect of pride. Nebuchadnezzar exhibits pride and God humbled him. When pride is at place in our life, we won't be able to submit ourselves and we will not be able to be committed. Number three, bitterness and anger is the root cause that can hinder us from being committed. When there is bitterness, when there is anger, when you are bitter against your fellow brother, bitter against the pastor, bitter against somebody, bitter against your wife, bitter against your children, bitter against uh, your co-workers, your body, your heart, your mind is polluted. Oh, the, the energy to be committed will not be there. Number four, when there is cares and worries of the world. Second John Chapter 2, verse 15 to 17. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For whoever loveth the world, the love of the Father is not in him. But what are those things that are in the world? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. He said they are not of God, but they are of the world. And the world passes away, and the fullness thereof. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. How many of us know what happens to Demas? First Timothy chapter 4 verse 10. Paul was crying out. He said, ah, Demas started this journey with me. But Demas have loved this present world. And he has forsaken me. We will not forsake Christ in Jesus name. I want to jump finally. Brethren, when we 
commit ourselves, the anointing of God comes upon us. Yeah, I'm telling you. That was what happened to Elijah. Am I right? The moment Elijah proved him and he saw that this guy is completely sold out, the power came. The anointing came. And those who were just busy mocking, the sons of the prophet in Giga, the sons of the prophet in Bethel, the sons of the prophet in Jericho, what happens when this guy got the power? Say to yourself, I got the power. When he got this power, hey, literally, in fact, they knew that the power has come. And they rushed to him and bow. Commitment will make you outstanding among your peers. Commitment will make you outstanding. You will not just be the general person. You will be outstanding. You will be a class of your own. Am I communicating here? Let me tell you something. There are rewards when you are committed to God. When you are committed to the assignment. When you are committed to the vision. When you are committed to the leadership. I'm telling you there is a brilliant reward. Do you know what? Peter asked for reward. Let's look at it. Matthew 19, 27 to 28. Matthew 19, 27 to 28. Matthew chapter 19, verse 27 to 28. Do you know Peter asked for reward? David asks for reward. Therefore, it is not out of place for you to ask for reward and know what lies ahead of you. What am I going into? Why must I be committed? There is a reward. Reward that it is completely beyond human explanation. Look at what Peter said. Peter answered him. He said, Master, we have left everything and we have followed you. What then will there be for us? What is in this thing? I can no longer use my boat anymore. What is in this thing for me? Look at what Jesus Jesus said to them. Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne. He said, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Can I prophesy to 20 people here? You will not miss your place in destiny. Say so you will be with me. Judging the 12 tribes of Israel. I can't trade that reward for anything. I can't trade it. Oh, sitting at the right hands of God. You will be there. Ah, I say you will be there. I will be there. We will be there. All God is demanding is our commitment to him. The best person you can get yourself committed to is God Almighty. I'm telling you. We don't have problem with commitment. I've just discovered that. We don't have problem with commitment. We have problem with what we are committed to. Or who we are committed to. Yes, everybody is committed to one thing or the other. Am I communicating here? We, are, we can do anything for some things. We don't have problem with commitment. It's, it's, the problem is who do we channel that commitment to? And I'm telling you the best, even if it is only likely, and my reward is with me. So there is a reward for you, my brother. There is a reward for you, my sister, for your consistency, for your devotion, for your unrelenting support. There is a reward, and my God will reward you. One. The Lord the stars of heaven, and as the sun uh, which is upon the seashore, and the sea shall possess the gates of his uh, enemies. So please let us let all of us name we pray. Thank you. It is not paralysis that completes it. Their hands started it. It is not incurable sickness that completes it. But their hands started it. Their eyes completed. That they will give you all the glory. They have
Come to the forget anything in my testimony. Lying to all put me in this hospital here next to them. Yet I had no symptoms. Never. Never got sick. I had testing done last week. And guess what? The test was negative. No coronavirus. No. I started coming here with open arms. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, Dr. Amy. Praise the Lord. I've, I think I've testified. It's me to encourage. Um, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I think the last four years in so many ways were... Um, I think was God's way of making me go through the fire. I write everything. Regardless of the circumstances that you go through, if God has decided that he is going to do it, uh, and I get yourself. Dream big. Big. He is so, so... For Jesus. It's... Um, it's... Uh, <laughs> Let's clap for Jesus. That was awesome.